a lot of my projects, the goal isn't to get things to 100% right away. I try to get a working version first, something that functions just well enough so I can test if the concept actually works and then figure out where the weak points are. That way I try not to waste time or resources chasing perfection on the first go. You can see this approach in my last video about the 3D printer. I wasn't sure if the frame would be rich enough for some decent prints and a lot of you noticed that too, but I wanted to get it to a usable state first. Just good enough to test, to see how it performs and whatever it's even worth adding more components or stiffening things up. That first version or prototype gives me something real to work with and more importantly to learn from. Part of this is also that I like coming up with my own solutions. I don't want to just copy what I've seen elsewhere, so I try to solve problems the way that I think makes sense. That usually means that there will be issues in the first try, but that's kind of the point. Making those mistakes myself is the most valuable part of the process. Sure, I do take inspiration here and there, but I always try to find my own way. And that way usually comes with flaws, but also with a lot of learning. This sometimes works better and sometimes worse. Like this oiling system, which is sort of working, but only a bit. Here trying to save it for years really wasn't worth the effort, as I can now say with confidence that pneumatic fittings and tubing isn't really made for even low pressure oiling systems. Now you could say that this is obvious, but I wanted to test it anyways. So following that approach, getting something working first and then refining it, there's always a second phase that is needed. Once the project reaches that first usable state, the project isn't really finished. That's when I have to circle back and actually make those improvements. And for my CNC, that time has come. With the 3D printer assembled, the first proper project I ran on this machine really brought out a few areas where the setup could be better. So now I'm going back through and addressing some of the things that I put off the first time around and things that came up during use. And before exchanging or adding parts, the first step is a bit of overdue maintenance and cleanup. One of these things is for example this chip guard, which has a tear in it and was always a bit too small anyways. But also workflow improvements, for example by tool organization. Directly opposite of the mill is my tool cabinet in which I store my end mill, holders and general work holding. I usually take out what I need and store that on top of the cabinet while I'm working with it. And over time the space can become quite crowded and unorganized. So I'm trying some 3D printed organization systems. Not yet going full gridfinity, but I've included the necessary cutouts to be able to go that route. And while I'm at it, I will be also updating the firmware, bringing everything up to date and switching over to a more modern interface. This also in preparation for the new probes, both for the tools and the workpiece. Here it is less about repair and more a bit of upright replacing parts. For my first tool probe, I chose the cheapest option that I could find. And in the end, that is not a good thing. I mean, it works, but it has its issues especially when loading small or tools like the center drill with a pointy tip. Depending on how the tool touches the surface, sometimes the probe surface retracts at an angle, leading to an unreliable measurement or an error. Another thing is that the bottom of the probe is open so that chips can enter the probe body, especially when using compressed air for cleaning. If that happens, the chips can short the probe signal, making a correct tool loading impossible. These issues originate from the fact that it's a simple push button. It's easy to exchange, but not really made to be used as a tool probe. This in terms of repeatability, but more importantly, correct travel or detection. So I'm upgrading to a widely used input variant. It has actually two sensors or switches inside, one for normal tool probing and the other one as an e-stop in case there are any issues with the probe. When reassembling the mill last fall, I already routed a 4 wire cable to the table, as this change was something that I wanted to do for quite some time.
So after mounting the probe, rewiring the cable, setting the new absolute coordinates of the pull pad and having to invert the probing logic, this is now our normally closed probe, the tool probe is up and running. It seems to work nicely and thankfully I could reuse my existing M6 remap and the probing subroutine. The last round of changes is the touch probe. I've been using this manual wiggle probe and it works great. However, for me, it does take some time and as I'm not a machinist, it does leave room for inaccuracies. Therefore, if the dimensions are not too critical, I just use the first tool in my program and advance the tool towards the stock material until it slightly cuts into the stock. This is fast, but only doable if you don't want to pick up on an already machined surface. So I want to additionally install a digital touch probe to look for the edges of the stock material. And here I also went for a commonly used input variety. The connection was quite straightforward and sort of unexpected, the probe input worked right away. What I did not expect though was the noticeable run out on that probe tip. It was around 0.2 millimeters. Using the 1mm hex key, I was able to adjust the probe pretty good by loosening the hex bolt on the one side and tightening it on the other. At least to within what I can measure, which is around 1 100th of a millimeter. Now the probe tip is in the center of the spindle axis, but the connecting rod is visibly off center. But I think for the price, this does not really matter. By upgrading both probes, I can now settle into a new starting workflow. First loading the digital touch probe and measuring its height. Then finding the boundaries of the stock material and setting the coordinate system before loading the first cutting tool. This is fast and repeatable, ready for the next project. See you in the next one.